So today I'm back with a quick video on ASIC mining. I saw this guide on Twitter and I thought it'd be useful for any of you ASIC miners out there that want to reduce noise and power to give a bit more efficiency to your ASIC miner. This guide is for the S9 from Bitmain. It should also be applicable to some variations of the S9 ASIC. A lot of ASIC miners will have standard fan sizes, which you can also apply these steps to. When we take a look at the PDF, we can see that it is more aimed at getting rid of your electric heater and actually swapping it for an old S9, which can be modified to produce less noise. We have seen recently the new heat bit, which is basically a mining heater. However, these are vastly overpriced and you could just buy this hardware for a fraction of the price. You can pick up an S9 for around $150 used and they have the same hash rate and power consumption. Also, Heatbit is connected to NiceHash, which isn't the most profitable choice of pool, in my opinion. So if you are looking to buy a Heatbit, then I'd suggest you just follow this guide instead and save yourself around $800. So it starts off by saying this build is one of the thousands of combinations and ways to do it. Use this guide as a way to find what works best for you. What works for others might not work with your setup. So there can be many different ways to do it, it just gives you a rough idea of how to actually modify your ASIC. Down here they have all the parts and the PDF provides a link to each of these components so you can also buy them. Also you don't have to buy all of these as it says below that the upgrades on cost around 150 and then if you want to buy the S9 with the upgrades then it's going to cost 250 And lastly if you want to make it look like a heater then you have to buy the case and all around with the upgrades and the S9 will cost a maximum of $385. So the first upgrade step is the PSU fan which is one of the best upgrades to lower the noise of the miner. They normally are around 75 decibels, but this can actually reduce it down to 55 decibels, which is a dramatic difference, especially if you want to have this miner in your house. So here we have the PSU fan, and you have to take the actual heat sink off first to get to the fan. Then you should pull it out relatively easily. Now the next step is to deal with the power connector. The normal fan uses two pin, but the Nautica uses three pin as shown here. They provide two ways to get around this. The first is stripping the wires and soldering them, but if you don't have the equipment for that, you can just get a 3-pin to 2-pin connector. So here we have the soldering guide, but the connector is probably the better option and it costs around a dollar or two to buy. So you put the fan down in the same place, but make sure it's facing the right way so that the airflow isn't flowing backwards. Then it shows where the PSU fan connector is, and it's actually at the front of the A6 circle in red here. If you have any extra cable, you can tuck it above the connector to stop it from catching fire. Then you take the grill and put the screws through and secure the fan back in place. Now the next part is the hashboard fan upgrade. This is a bigger fan but the very same process. So you take the fan off the front end to expose the hashing boards. And then for this upgrade you need an actual adapter from 140mm to 120mm fan. So that the fan fits over the previous one. You can get these relatively cheap, but you could also search for 120mm silent fans, but these ones from Nautica are probably the best out there for the price. And again, the connectors are going to be different. But this time, all you have to do is take the old connector off and swap it for the new connector wires. Make sure that you take a picture of the wire layout before putting them on, otherwise you'll put them in backwards. Next step is to screw on the fan adapter. But one thing that you need to be careful of is not to screw into the hashing board. Either screw it slightly above the board, or you can measure it and just cut the screws to the correct length. Then attach the fan to the adapter and plug it into the power board. Again, make sure that the fans are pulling air through instead of pushing it out. These two upgrades are probably the most valuable ones in this guide, and really easy to do. To set the fan speeds and power, you can edit it in Brains OS Plus. It's a very easy procedure and there's loads of guides out there on YouTube on how to do that. They list here their favourite S9 settings, the power is considerably lower at 650 watts, and the fans aren't on 100%. Now if you wanted heat out of this machine, as the kind of guide describes for this machine, you could lower the fan speed to allow it to heat the air a bit more before pushing it out. This gives a chip temperature of around 80 degrees, which is fairly normal. Then it claims that the noise level will be around 45 decibels, which is significantly lower and the standard 75 decibels of the normal S9. To give you some measure, 45 decibels is slightly above GPU mining noise level, so it's not really anything too loud. Lastly, this setting will produce around 8.25 terahash. If we compare this setting to the standard ones for an S9, it gives around 20% more efficiency, which is a large jump in efficiency for an ASIC miner. So there's two other optional upgrades, which are Wi-Fi mining, 
which is just adding an ethernet dongle to the ethernet port and then adding a booster box on a wall socket. So in my opinion, that will probably give lower shares as the connection to the pool won't be as good. So I just stick to straight ethernet to internet box. Now the second option is to put the ASIC inside a case. This is more for aesthetics in your house if you don't want people to look at the ASIC miner. So they got this case from Crypto Cloaks. All you have to do is put the PSU first and then the ASIC goes on. But remember to put the intake fan at the bottom so the hot air can flow out the top. Then add the top parts and it should be all good to go. Lastly, they provide a bunch of results and testing for the ASIC. So we have here the control test which shows the stock fans with no upgrades. Then it tests a bunch of different combinations across the boards. The first couple of lines are the top don't really show much data. As you go down, they provide more data. I think this is because at higher watts, the chips can't be read as they are higher temperatures. But they keep lowering the watts until they hit a sweet spot at the bottom, which is around 700 to 500 watts. They're all having very good temperatures at this watt range. They also have good efficiency and very low noise output. Now, I don't really want to dive too much into this data, but I believe that this result right here is probably the best so far. But even in the lower watts, it will produce good efficiency and air temps to actually act as a heater as this guide is supposed to be. So I'll leave a link to the PDF in the description below and a link to the results page if you want to look further. I hope this has helped you guys out and if there's any questions you have regarding the process, please leave a like and comment below and I'll try to help you out. Like the video and subscribe for more content like this.